I'm Tara. I'm Ryan. We love Disney movies. So we decided to watch them all, from Snow White to Frozen 2 and beyond. Each episode will watch a different Walt Disney Animated Studios film and tell you all about it. Did we like it? Does it hold up? Who's our favorite hero? Or villain. We'll give you history and fun facts about each movie. And sometimes we'll invite our friends to watch along with us. So put on your tiara. Or your evil crown. And join us on our adventure. This is Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. Hello listeners and welcome to another mini tale where we strive to keep everything under 45 minutes. Today we will be talking about Cinderella's Dress uh, in the 2015 <laughs> movie Kenneth Branagh directed Cinderella. Uh, the movie is fantastic and I love all of our listeners and I don't want to turn anyone away with this statement I'm about to make, but we had a poll go up on what the next mini tale should be, and no one voted for this one. And shame on you, listeners. This is a great movie. <laughs> um, also, the reason we did this one before the vote is because it is my birthday week, so I chose that we do Cinderella first. Uh, but we will be doing Mary Poppins Returns as the next mini tale because that was voted highest uh on the facebook page so listeners i love every single one of you but i was shocked that this one didn't have any votes and after watching it even more shocked because it was such a delightful film we we, we we'd love to sit here all day and tell you about how much tara hates our listeners but we have to go <laughs> we have 45 minutes and you loved it so much there's so much to talk about there is. I, there's at least f- we could talk mostly about her dress that's true, i have so many I have points about her dress talk about it's too. so good first of all You may be thinking, oh, let me tell you how I thought when this movie came out. First of all, this is before we did the podcast, and I was kind of like, "Eh, I don't really care for Cinderella, which I have, I'm on record as changing my mind about. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I went, okay, well, it's the same movie again. No, there's a lot of of other material and character Mm -hmm. development and changes that are- Go ahead. You go ahead. I think this is a great example of doing a live action remake right. They gave you just enough new information and new story that it keeps your interest so you don't get bored thinking it's the same thing being told again. And I think they did it really well. I think what they did a disservice is the music. And we'll talk about that a little later. It's a minor disservice. It is a minor disservice. But uh, what I will say is I think this is what a live action remake, in my opinion, should be. It should be the core of the original story. And then they should flourish it in different ways. Well, I also think the people who did this had a love for... The film. The film. The Disney film. Some of this stuff, I think, you know, Dumbo and... Alice in Wonderland, I think Tim Burton has a love for weird stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of what got him into it. This one felt like there's there's actually a quote uh, from Kenneth Branagh I'll try and I'll find here in a second. But one thing I did want to say that I really liked about this is I think they got the core of Cinderella Agreed. correct. Mm-hmm. And it's and it, yeah, it's gratifying after we've seen it and said what we liked about her as a princess is she was very kind. Yeah. And all that. And I've written a couple quotes down that I think are really good, just not necessarily life lessons, but if you're watching this with children, I think they're really good quotes to pull out to talk about on like how to live your life. I think it it works as a movie on so many different levels. So I do want to talk about that as well. well. One thing I do want to talk about, and this is a quote from Sir Kenneth Branagh, excuse <laughs> me. Uh uh, Sir Kenneth Branagh believes the essence of Cinderella as a character can be seen as she enters the ball. She lit up from within. She didn't trade one personality at the door. She brought her real self into this real place and found a way to be at ease. Mm. And I think that was something that after seeing that, watching this movie, I thought of a lot. She's not changing for this prince. And they yes. they push that even more in this movie than I think the animated mm-hmm. one. Cinderella is a good person and the problem is... The, the the magic is to get her in the door. The magic doesn't make the prince fall in love with her. Mm-hmm. You know, to do this stuff. In, in, in Aladdin, there's a little bit of Aladdin, like, discovering that through Prince Ali. And Aladdin like, is disguised. I guess she's somewhat disguised, too. Yes, but, but Aladdin's disguised. He's like, I have to be a prince. So he's like, there's... The, and it's it's conflict with the main character. Mm-hmm. It's it's The conflict is within of him going, I need to be something I'm not. Instead of realizing mm. his... his self is his potential yeah she knows that she's good and kind hers is well it's not even a confidence it's just it's cinderella is a story of her versus outside forces Mm. and i think 
that's it's 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 interesting of itself and it was a good way to lens to look through it i had a thought through this movie because the movie focuses a lot on her mother giving advice her mother played by Haley atwell who i adore mm-hmm. captain america's girlfriend peggy uh wonderful wonderful actress We'll we'll be showing up again apparently in Christopher Robin. Oh, interesting. Um, but she plays her mother, and she's in. She looks terrible with a dyed blonde. I don't know if that was a wig or that was just dyed blonde. I but she, she looked fine. <laughs> I thought it looked weird. But she passes, and she says, "Oh, I've got all of the yeah." Written we'll, down. We'll, we'll, okay. She passes, oh. and she says, "It's important. You need to remember to be, cur- uh, what is it? Have courage and be kind." <laughs> yes. I was like, be courage. That's not it. Yeah. Have courage and be kind. And that becomes kind of the focal point of the movie. Yes. Like, it's important for her to be kind no matter, to everyone, no matter how they treat her. Well, the thing is, is it's not, her mother doesn't say, this is what you should do. Her mother says, this is who you are. Remember to always yes. be true to this. And I think that there's a difference there. Right. Like, okay. I think practicing kindness, yes, but that's not really what her mother says. She's saying, like, you have so much courage and you're so kind. And she says that has more power than you know. Yes. And I think that that, that message is so powerful as well. Um the thing I loved is the opening credits, those two little bluebirds that fly over the mm-hmm. Cinderella's castle that is the Disney castle. I thought that was cool. Yes. They don't use that castle. That was kind design, of which I when they, Yeah, when they show the prince's castle, it's different. His castle looks more like Vers- Versailles, which was, I think, like the original, which is weird because they make a point that this isn't France. Because she learns to speak French and it's not the language yeah, they're speaking. Yeah, and it, I, I think she learns to speak French because her father comes yes. back from traveling. And so that's what I what I wrote here too. We see her name is Ella. Mm-hmm. We're introduced to her as Ella and we see her as a child so much more. She's very kind and friendly to animals. She talks to animals when she's young. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, her mother gets sick and her mother winds up passing away. And so it's just her and her father and time passes and you find out that her father travels. He goes away for months at a time and then He's comes a merchant, back. He's yeah. A, yeah. So um and they grow together, the two of them. And so he mentions that he knows this widow who's recently lost her mm-hmm. husband, but she's still in the prime of her life. And he feels, you know, it's time for them to make a family again and another chance for them to be happy. So he's looking at it as a very positive step. But I like that he talks to Ella about it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't just make the decision. He asks her. They have a very good relationship. But it doesn't just play off as he's asking her permission. It's also he feels like he's going through his own thing of like, should I get married again? Yeah, yeah, like, definitely. And, and I think in the, the cartoon, he just show he's like in one shot in a window. She's also very young. Like yes. she's older here, I feel like when that happens like age wise it's a little bit different because they take you through every step of her going from just this daughter to becoming the servant in a way so it's like so i feel like sometimes when you watch the original one you're like why is she doing this why is she being the servant and they do a good job of like it's small steps it's small steps lady tremaine like takes advantage of her kindness Mm -hmm. and makes her like this yeah lady tremaine it's fantastic. And that's my next sentence is stepmother <laughs> entrance with Lucifer on leash is amazing. Well, she throws so Lucifer she throws, out of the cab. Yeah, out of the, the <laughs> carriage. And her outfit and her hat, we don't even see her face. We see her whole this whole hat. And it's so beautiful. And we should mention the costumes. We're going to talk about Cinderella's dress. But the costumes in general, Lady Tremaine's especially, are mm-hmm. fantastic. Lots of good hats. Lots of good jewels. When she has everybody in the house and they're all kind of gambling and playing cards. I love that outfit. It was like all green and jeweled. It was the Lady Tremaine outfit. Really, really beautiful. Nominated for an Academy Award, did not win. For costumes? For costumes. Oh, design, God. Yes. What one? I will look that up while you continue. Okay. We find out that slowly but surely she starts moving all of C- all of Cinderella's mother's stuff to the attic. And she does it in a very, again, in a very like coy way. The stepsisters are fighting. Um, and what we should mention here is father travels again, and so she's alone with them again. Yes. So it doesn't happen that her father dies outright. He's with them. He leaves. He goes on a trip, and it seems like this has happened before where he's gone for months at a time, and so Ella is there with them. And so the stepmother, she 
she very like coyly says, oh, they're not used to sharing a room together, the stepsisters, and they're they're getting on each other's nerves. And Ella, without even thinking, says, well, next to your and father's room, mine's the largest in the house. Why don't they have my room? And you think that she's then going to take the stepsister's room. But instead, uh, Lady Tremaine takes advantage of that and says, oh, that's a perfect idea. You can go up to the attic and take all this bric-a-brac with you. And it's all of her mother's sewing kit Mm -hmm. and all of her, all of these different things that are of like the past life, the past family life goes up to this attic. And that's how she moves and goes up to the attic. So, the winner, it was a 2015, uh, the 88th Oscars, and the winner was actually Mad Max Fury Road, which, oh. like, a completely opposite type of costume design, but still amazing in yeah. its own right. However, Sandy Powell was apparently the costume designer for this, and she was nominated for two movies that year, and this was one, another one was a movie called Carol, oh, which I, I believe also had, yes, also had Kate Blanchett in it. Oh, cool. Um, so I wrote a quote here that I love. Mornings did not agree with Ella's stepsisters. (laughs) There's a lot of good, the narrator, we should say, is the fairy godmother, Helena Bonham Carter. Who's wonderful. Also fantastic. And, um, brings a real different kind of energy, like still her energy, but kind of in a different way to this role, which I really like. Question for you, because you are on record. It's not, this is fun going back to the ones we've done stuff with. Uh, you said you did not like <laughs> the stepsisters in the original one. They kind of they had a lot of go away hate with you. How do how do the new ones rate? Uh, they have a little bit of go away heat for me, but I think they are more humorous in this one. They play on their on their eccentricities, I guess, and a kind of on their cruelty. I think the one to really make you uncomfortable is Lady Tremaine. Like mm-hmm. Lady Tremaine makes you really like want to hit her she like, did a makes good you, job. she did a really well and i don't want to say hit her but i mean like oh no you, you meant hit her there are a couple th- yeah the thing, throughout this we kept saying like why doesn't she just hit the stepsisters why she's yeah and i think that's the point of this is character she's so kind is she's stronger that's, than you or i well <laughs> and that's her. not yeah that's not what she thinks she didn't of, grow up in new jersey that's true <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but I have to say I liked these stepsisters less because I don't know why, but they got to me more than the ones in the movie. I can see that. Yeah, they didn't really bother me as much. But I wrote here, too, that the stepmother feels out of place. And I like that we kind of see she's cruel for sure, but you kind of see that she doesn't feel comfortable in this home because this home is Cinderella's and her father's and she's moved into it and... He keeps, she keeps running into like situations where the Cinderella's father says, you know, like, oh, like it refers up to her mother. mother. Yeah. Or they catch them and her being like, I love your mother so much. And yes. Like that. And so you see that. And then she gets the news of her father passing away and he brings the branch. There's this whole thing where her stepsisters want parasols and lace when he goes away. And she's like, I just want the first branch that touches your shoulder. And he's like, what a peculiar thing to ask for. And she's like, well, you have, you'll have to have it on your whole journey. So every time you'll look at it, you'll think of me mm-hmm. and then it'll have to last the whole time till we get back. And so that's, what's given to her. So when that happens, the stepsisters are crying about their parasols and lace when they found out the father has died. Ella is obviously heartbroken, and the stepmother says, none of that matters now. How will we live? Mm-hmm. So again, she's focused on, what I will say is she's focused on providing for her and her step, her daughters. And you hear that story later in a really kind of dark and ugly moment when she shares her story with Ella. Um, I She's cruel to yeah. be cruel, for sure. But I do think... It's coming from a place of survival. Yes. I think she's still the villain. They do a good job in here of making you yeah. understand her, but she's not redeemed. You can empathize with her, but yeah, I don't think she's redeemable. But I feel like she was on a similar path as Cinderella, and when something went bad, she grew a heart. Ex- she threw away being kind. Yeah. She was no, she's no longer uh, courageous or kind. She's mm-hmm. gu- She's guarded. She's mean to everyone except yeah. for her kids. Yeah. And her kids are like, she said that her first husband, she married out of love and then he died. Mm-hmm. So like, she loves her, this is a direct quote from it, her stupid daughters. Yeah. But like, that's what she has from that marriage. Yeah. Is these dum dums. <laughs> and then the next time she marries to, she marries Ella's father for financial reasons yes. to keep them afloat. And we see that she's not 
super great with money. She yes, seems no. to spend above her means anyway. Um, so yeah, we do get to see a lot more insight into that kind of background in that story as well. And they, she winds up having to dismiss the house staff. So Cinderella's and her father had a whole staff. They've lived in this house 200 years. The house is very important to her parents. You know, she made this promise like to always keep this house, um, and to live in this house and to share in those memories of her with her parents. And so when, Lady Tremaine dismisses the house staff slowly but surely that's how Ella becomes the servant and Lady Tremaine says you know it'll distract you from your grief so again she starts giving her chores saying oh this is going to help you through your grief and it's not going to have you be so upset because you're going to be focused and she's up in the drafty attic and she sleeps by the cinders which is the original story and as she's preparing breakfast she sets an extra plate at the table and they ask who it's for and she goes well it's for me and the way Kate Blanchett delivers those lines and she does this throughout but it's so good because she's like well dear after you've worked so hard to serve breakfast and serve it all wouldn't you much rather want to eat somewhere else? You don't want to sit here with us. Like no, it, she, was, it was you won't have enough time. That's to it. Yeah, but she just delivers yeah. it in such a smart way. And that's how we see her becoming this servant is little by little with these comments. Um, and that's when they give her the name Cinderella. They call her Cinder Wench and Cinder something else. And then they settle on Cinderella as her name. And we mentioned here that we had stronger feelings of anger and emotions from Lady Tremaine because it's real people. Yeah. And I feel like the emotions are stronger. It being real people, I, it almost hits you harder. Like, And they're so cruel to her in this breakfast scene. And another thing the narrator says is names have power. And I think that that's another great point if you have kids to talk about like if you're using names to bully someone or to like you know what I mean like mm -hmm. names can be positive and they can be negative and this is a good example of that as Cinderella like hurts her so much and then that's how she introduces herself to the prince at the end I don't know if you noticed that but yes. she she uses that name and she turns it around so I think there's something to be said about that too so let's back up a sec to the servant thing because one thing I really liked about this is Showing that they had servants at one point. Yeah. And that that they all loved Cinderella. Like, as far yeah. as she, she would bring them food. She exactly. Would, she, would do work. she would, like, get the eggs for the cook in the yeah. morning and she things like that. She knew how to do this stuff from yeah. watching them. But one of my favorite parts that was such a minor part is Cinderella obviously doesn't have a lot of characters to bounce off of. She's in a room full of people who hate her. So she can't be like, here's how I feel. And they didn't want her to just be like, uh, like, they had her talk to her animals a lot, but they didn't always want to do that. So they have a scene where she goes to market to buy things and she's with an, a, an ex servant. Who, yeah. It feels like she's like, I got out of there. You got to get out of well, there. And, and yeah, I like that scene. I do too. And she was like, why do you stay there? And that's when she mentions Explains. it's the house, it's the history, it's all of these things. Can I pop in with a few facts real quick? Yeah. So I want to talk about the top three grossing movies of that year. Okay. So this is also, first off, Kenneth Brano's highest grossing film. Okay. I don't know how much it went off the top of my head. I'll find out a little later. But it's because the top three grossing... It's not even on the top ten. Because the top grossing film that year was Star Wars, The Force Awakens, at oh, $2 billion. So they didn't goodness. really have... Yeah. We're, we're getting into the point where it's like... Outrageous it's, numbers. Yeah. You got you to gotta make yeah. a lot of it. So it was Star Wars, Force Awakens, Jurassic World, and Furious 7. Mm. Yeah. That, that's also crazy to me that a Avengers Marvel movie was fourth that year when it was like <laughs> doing so well. Yeah. Um, let me know when you want me to start throwing out 8 million things about the, uh, the dress. The I want to talk a little bit before the dress. Okay. So we also liked that she runs to the forest on a horse when she's upset. And this is how she meets the prince. And we liked that she got to meet the prince ahead of time. And that, it, that's a little bit like Sleeping Beauty where they don't know who each other is. That horse in real life named Pinocchio. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the prince introduces himself as Kit. And you said that that meant... King in training. Because yeah. the whole bit is he's like, I'm an apprentice to my father's field. And when they come... He up, doesn't like, want to tell her he's a prince. Yes. And essentially, they're out hunting. And she sees the stag. And at first, this giant stag you think is going to attack her. And she helps it get away from them hunting. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where we kind of find out that his father is sick as well. 
Um, you know, and they have this whole scene together and they meet and he wants to know who she is. She never gives her name. They leave. He goes back, talks to his dad. And I love the relationship between him and his dad. All the parental relationships, minus the stepmother, are all really, I think, strong relationships in this movie. His father played by Jarrett Jacoby, who you might remember as the voice of Nicodemus in Rats of Nim. Yes. And the prince is from Game of Thrones. I forgot his, I think it's Richard Madden, but, uh. Uh, yeah, Rob Stark, Richard yes. Madden, yes, uh, with the bluest of eyes, and you said that that was so that was intentional. Every piece of his, they wanted to put more blue in his costume so that it would bring out his eyes. They yeah, really and they did noticeable. a really good job with that. Um, in and- his uh, ball outfit, like it's not super blue, but there are like blue threads mm. run through the rest of it, so it still kind of has a weird blue hue to it. Yeah. Um, you know, he talks about wanting to marry a country a country girl and his father's saying he needs to marry a princess and they kind of go back and forth about this. And so it's decided that they're going to have the ball where he can meet the princesses, but the invitation will go out to everyone, not just nobility. So yes. that uh, was the prince's choice so he could maybe see her again. So a ball for the people. And I love that all of this is decided while he's getting his portrait painted. And this is just a funny little bit with that painter who's like Rob on that, Bryden. who's on that like swing that like gets lifted for him to paint, which I guess is how maybe they did giant portraits like that. But it's I mean, it makes sense. kind of a funny little comedy bit in there um, that I liked a lot. And then that's when Ella's in town and we talked about her talking with the other servant and that's how she hears about the invitation. So in the cartoon version the animated version you know the invitations i think are given to each household like Mm. they go door to door here she hears about it in the square um and then i love when she goes home and she tells them and the stepmother says you have to go to the seamstress to get three i've got it to get three dresses and cinderella says oh thank you so much she goes what are you talking about not one for you one for drizella one for anastasia and one for me Like, you're not going to be included. And she wants a Parisian. The stepmother wants, she says. Maud, it's some French term. And then the stepsister's like, she doesn't understand what you're saying. And then she speaks fluent French. (laughs) And then one of the stepsisters says, what did she say? You speak French. She goes, I speak French, not Italian. Yeah. (laughs) Now, the other thing I liked about that is the the, um, narrator in a funny little bit goes like, the stepsisters responded appropriately to that. And they like throw Lucifer off the thing and they're like, ah! they Yeah, yeah. I, I like that we hear uh, Helena Bonham Carter's voice throughout as the mm-hmm. narrator. It makes you feel very connected to the godmother when you see her because she isn't in it very long. It also, she's in it for around 10 minutes and she's first build. It's, I mean, it's her it's scenes are role. fantastic. But, but. Um, she, uh, I also think it makes it, gives it a very storytelling mm-hmm. fairy tale feel. Yes. Feel. Yeah, and I wrote here we really got to know and like the prince, and I really like that a lot. He has a personality, and we know his character traits, and I think they did a really good job of that here. I also wrote Moonface, and I hate that they called her that, and you said that that... I think it's a... it's a, I'd have to look it up. I didn't look it up, but I think it's a very... Uh, inappro- I, don't, I think it's now considered a slightly inappropriate term for a dumb person. Oh, Okay. Um, yeah, I just didn't care for it. Uh, but that's, again, them being... You literally went, moon face! Yeah, but that's them being cruel to her. Yes. So, Ella makes her own dress while, you know, she's doing all the chores with a little help from the mice. What I will say is the mice don't have as big of a role until it's time for everything to be changed. But Magic. they still have a pretty big personality despite not being dressed and anthropomorphic. Yeah, and yeah. And I will say we both talked about afterwards that we liked that how they treated the animals in this is how they treated the animals in 101 Dalmatians in the live action remake. They didn't make them actually talk. I mean, the mice did little like gestures and like me, 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 me kind of sounds. But mm-hmm. um, it what felt... Kind of sounds? You heard me. It <laughs> felt appropriate, and I think they gave humor where humor was needed, and they are a support for her, and that you know she does talk with them, and uh, you know kind of has them throughout the film, which mm-hmm. I did like. So she's basically um, it's her mother's old dress, which I believe that that's true in the animated version as well, and the 
stepmother says it's old rags. And she says, I can't allow you to be seen with my daughters looking like that. And the stepmother is the one that tears the dress. Whereas in the animated version, I'm pretty sure it's the stepsisters. They notice she's used things of theirs and they start pulling at it. Whereas this, I think, is even more cruel that it's Lady Tremaine rips Mm. the shoulder and rips it another um, part and calls her a ragged servant girl. And then they leave for the ball. Um, And then Helena Bottom Carter comes in looking old and ragged and I loved it. Of course, Tara's like, ooh, look at old woman. I love it. That's what I I want to cosplay as I also pointed out why Disney princess, Disney fairy... In, like the Enchantress in Beauty and the Beast is like an old crone. And because then... if you remember in Beauty and the Beast, he was mean to her and she changed him into a beast. But she, but this fairy godmother knew that Cinderella was nice. I mean, she still had to test her, I feel like. I, I, why? Why is that part because of Because she got to watch just, that godmother movie, spent, I guess, to see if that's she part spent, of it. She spent so much time with the stepmother that could have changed how she was, personality She's wise. been watching her this whole time. They show, <laughs> she's like outside kind of. Watch here. I have a couple uh, Helena Bottom Carter facts I'd like to throw out there. Okay. So first of all, if you remember, we haven't seen the new Alice in Wonderland, but Helena Bottom Carter plays the fairy godmother in this and the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, yeah. Much like Verna, where is her name? Verna Felton played the voice of the the godmother and the queen in the animated version. Oh, that's cool. That is a cool uh, connection. I also have a dress uh, Helena Bottom Carter fact. Because, here it is, uh, her gown had tiny LEDs sewn into it. So when she does, I forgot to look for this. So when she does magic, her dress kind of oh, lights up in cool. a cool way. And the wand, uh, that might be. Her wand Her wand great. is really cool. Again, her whole outfit. I also like when she's in the rags because it's still kind of elegant. Like, even though it's not bright colors, I yeah. liked that costume as well. And she asks for milk and she talks about how kindness makes it everything. Somebody yes. who's kind. And then she says, I'm your hairy dog father, which I just like. She's aloof like the original. And I like that. they She kept the spirit of the original fairy godmother, I felt. So there was a fact that IMDb that it was like, Helena Bonham Carter calls herself a hairy dog father. She also plays... Uh, Bellatrix Lestrange in the Harry Potter series in which she's a sister of Sirius Black who can turn into a dog and is the godfather oh and I was like gosh. that's a that's that was a... not planned like, yeah <laughs> they're just being silly uh but she also talks about her having this courage and beautiful like there's just so much in this scene and it's just her whole outfit is really beautiful and the way she does the magic and she's so aloof um, and just the transformation. I love watching the mice turn mm-hmm. to horses and they keep their big ears for a little while yeah. as they're still transforming. The lizards turn to doormen and they are so weird looking as humans, but because they kind of keep those lizard traits well, a little bit. I looked bit. up the actor because funny enough, he was also in uh, Force Awakens that oh, year that's as funny. some background character, but he like he kind of looks like oh, that. Okay. He looks like someone who would be like, we want you to be a lizard person. Now we want you to be an alien in Star Wars. <laughs> Um, and then the goose is the coachman, which is really great. The goose. Uh, and then you mentioned here after she does all the magic, uh, she does the glass slippers and says, and I also made them comfortable, which yes, was funny. Cause I wanted her to go, I hope you like that dress. It has pockets. Like, yeah. Or something like that. Uh, but she also talks about how you won't be recognized by your stepmother. That which... was a note from Kenneth Brana that was, that he was apparently like. She why does, why don't they recognize it? Yeah, her? so I like that. But the dress transformation is so cool. We talked about it in the animated version about how difficult it was to animate that scene when it happened. And we had so many fun facts about it. And I think the transformation in this, they did just as good of a job. Yeah, I thought it was justice. so magical and so beautiful. And it changes from a pink to a blue. Again, that's a little Sleeping Beauty. But the dress that was her mother's was pink. And in the in the original she comes down similar in a pink yeah dress it's and more then it and then like, like a very light blue dress this is blue but well, a beautiful blue are you ready for all my dress yes so first off the director the the, the uh costumer apparently wanted it to look like watercolors i think they and nailed I think they that nailed, it's a beautiful dress it's so pretty uh there was a total of 270 yards of fabric used oh That's, my gosh and, and up to two miles of him do they talk about how much it weighed 
uh, somewhere I didn't grab it because I think at the time, like I did, I do these these facts before, and I think after having watched it, my questions are how much did that weigh? Yeah, no, like that's that. fine. They did talk about him when he lifts her up at the ball that he was like, oh god, like yeah. <laughs> he had to like work for that. Yeah. Um, because if you watch it, that doesn't look like like it looks like he's picking her up because yeah. he doesn't like really pick her up. So I don't think that's a stunt. I think he's yeah. doing that. Um. Uh, this is a little. Awkward, but I'm going to tell you, Lily James always went to use the restroom before being stitched into her blue gown for the sake of convenience. But if nature called again, a mini camping portable toilet was slipped under her dress. <laughs> See, that's not weird because if you've gotten married and you've worn a <laughs> wedding dress, I I took someone into the bathroom with me. Granted, I didn't have a huge bustle, but I would imagine the bigger your wedding dress, the more people you need to help you into the bathroom. So that isn't, I think it's weird for you to think about, but if you're a woman who's worn a dress like that, yeah. yeah. No, I don't think it's weird to think about it. I just think it's not super, it's not Disney princess-esque. I guess, yeah. Bring me my dress toilet. (laughs) Um... So the other thing we really notice about this is how it shines and sparkles. It looked like it was lit up, and you said that those were the crystals. Those are crystals. It, well, it yeah. looks animated or something. Yeah. But all they, well, all they did. <laughs> it was a total of ten thousand Swarovski mm-hmm. crystals were placed one by one on the blue dress and in Lily James's hair as well. I noticed so, that. So yeah. it gives it that kind of Jessica Rabbit look from from sparkle. Yeah, yeah it's so. so- so beautiful, and the way it moves, the movement, like almost feeling like a watercolor when she dances, when she runs. And you talked about how they had eight different dresses that were like built in different ways depending on what she was doing. So, like when she's running, she's got one that's like eight inches off the ground. Yeah, but whereas when she's, when she's walking, dancing, it's, it's down. Yeah, like that. Uh, I do have one more fact, but it's about the the shoes. Okay. The glass slipper in the film was created by the Austrian crystal company Swarovski, who mm. did a lot of this who developed a special piece of machinery just to create it. Oh, there wow. were eight copies that were made, but none of them were worn in the film. Most of them were used as props because mm. they didn't wear the shoes. All, every time the shoe is on her, that's CG. Which that kind of spoils the magic a little bit, but I, it makes sense. The shoe is gorgeous. Yeah, even when it's off her and all that, it yeah. looks very cool. Uh, but the she just looks spectacular. Like I cannot talk about it enough. You're gonna come out of this if if you, if you don't like anything else. I, I will say I have a certain opinions on how the the mood you should be in going to see this movie because I think it's a little hokey, but it's a fairy tale movie. If you're going into a fairy tale Cinderella movie and you're not ready for it to be like oh sweet happy endings, like go somewhere else. This isn't for you. I yeah, I think it was still brilliantly done. But I I, I think even the most jaded person can watch this movie and go the costuming in it is breathtaking yeah and just some of the performances so Mm -hmm. when they're at the ball Kate Blanchett when she's coaching the the stepsisters she's like on the sidelines basically as they're dancing yeah and it's so so good good. it feels like like a like a dance like like a like a stage mom it's so good yeah um, and then I wrote here too, the transformation back is really good. So when it strikes midnight and she's got to run away and, you know, there's, and again, we see so much of her in the prince. So there's a whole really beautiful scene of them dancing, but then them in like the secret garden and we really get to know their Ooh, relationship. In the secret garden. I love that song. <laughs> And you Guys, were Bruce fun Springsteen of it. didn't just walk into the room. That was just me. I'm sorry. I don't want to say it. Can uh, I say one thing to watch out for in the ball? Sure. Watch the other women's dresses because apparently a lot of them are designed after We did not. Other. I saw a we few. We caught Tiana, but I don't think you caught anybody else's. It says Belle, Tiana, Aurora, Snow White, Mulan, and Ariel. So I didn't see any of those keep an eye open ones, for that. I would like to watch it again to try to find them, but okay. I didn't see them. Um, cause they focus on that one a lot, the red and black, which she's, she becomes the princess that he's, the Duke has off, has, has, has already promised. promised. That's yeah. part of the, the thing. I want to say one more thing about the ball and then we can move on. It's about, okay. When in costume is You're Prince the one Kit. who said we have 15 minutes. Sorry. The tight, the, when in costume is Prince Kit, the tight pants made Richard Mann's bulge stick out. I noticed them, that actually. Well, you didn't because they had a bulge, but it was a jock strap. Oh, it was much. As the movie smaller. is supposed to be family friendly, several methods were used to hide and try his try and hide his genitalia, such as having Richard try on several jock straps so that nothing could be seen through the trousers. One of the straps was apparently so tight that Richard actually teared up in pain. Oh no! I have a footage of a of a of a interview where he talks about this, and they show that if you watch that scene again, there's a lot of scenes where like. 
she's in front of him or it's yeah. from like his belly up like and things I like noticed that. it at one point there's one shot that I was like oh you can kind of see but it's not it's, it's not, not a, David it Bowie like Labyrinth cod, it looks yeah. like a cod piece that's like yeah. he's wearing something under that to hide it hmm. um so after the whole transformation happens I like that she first hides the slipper in the cinders and mm-hmm. she's again very like daydreamy as in the animated version. She's happy that she had this experience. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what's kind of powering she's her not, through. Don't be sad, it's over. Be happy that it happened. Exactly. Stitch that on a pillow. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then she winds up hiding it in the attic. She's got like this little hiding place in the floor and she writes everything in her journal and is just like this is something I want to remember always. The journal didn't come back to bite. No, we I thought, thought it was, was going cause it, cause to. She doesn't journal through the whole movie. I this mean, maybe that's isn't... how the stepmother finds the slippers. She reads maybe. the journal, but we don't know that. This movie is about the importance of self-care. She's, it really she is. She needs to be kind to herself. Yes. She forgets that. She journals. It's a, it's a very yes. important movie. And I wrote here, I mentioned it earlier, the strong parental relationships, because we see this moment where the prince's father um, is dying and he says, I wish I could have been a better father. And they're talking and about how much they care for one another. And he says, you should marry for love. Like you should find this woman. Like don't, don't do what I said earlier and marry a princess. And yes. so well, she was kind to the pr- the king. Yes, on the way she out. was. Yeah. She, she, she was, was so kind. Up. She stopped. She goes, you need to know how much your son loves you. Yeah. And like, cares which, about you. She didn't have to stop and do that. No. Why do I love Cinderella so much? Because she's wonderful. <laughs> uh, So then this scene is so good. The stepmother finds the glass slipper and she's in the shadows and you see her from behind and she's got such a good silhouette. The slipper is lit though. Yeah. It's it's so bright and she's just dark. It's It's so good. Well, because remember they had all those scenes of like, darkness where you only saw her yes, eyes like lady shadow is yeah. a lot with lady Tremaine. they they did a really good job here and this is when she tells her story that we talked about where she's like let me tell you a story about a girl and the first time she marries she marries for love and he's the light of, the love of her life and the light of her life and then you know he's taken from her and then she marries for I don't know that she uses the word fortune, but marries. She, she marries has two for daughters, her, for her daughters. For her daughters. Yeah. And then he's taken away. And so, you know, you're finding that she's so jaded and so, she's just so like. Bitter. Yeah, and, and bitter, I guess. This is, this, she's been poisoned by this experience yes, as opposed yeah. to learning from it. Uh, I will say and she growing does, from it. She has a line here that's like. So it feels like that story's ending. Why don't you tell me yours? Yeah. It's like the way oh, I, that was so my, good. She's yeah, really she's good really great. And she winds up smashing the glass slipper, so now it's just the heel. And I love that Ella stands up for herself here. I think that that's really important, too, when you're watching it with kids. Ella doesn't take it. I will say that Cinderella in the animated version never really stands up to the stepmother, mm-hmm. Ella stands up for herself here because basically the stepmother's like, so you can go marry the prince and have the love that you want, even though it's not going to last. But you go ahead and think that. And then I'm going to be in charge charge of the household and be in charge of the boy. And she's like, he's not a boy. And she's like, well, this is what's going to happen. And she says, no, it's not. I watched you destroy my father. I'm not going to let you do that to this to 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 this prince, prince in the, and kingdom. the kingdom yeah and so she basically sacrifices her happiness for the happiness of others and mm. is and i love that moment for this character it's never there's never a moment where cinderella is like they could have easily been like and then cinderella beats up her you know you can write <laughs> but you can write women like for a long time the way you wrote a strong woman is you made them literally physically strong yeah and i think in this one they make her strong by ex accentuating what makes Cinderella Cinderella. Yeah. She's she hits her guys at jumping She's emotionally well, strong. Well at the end when like she looks her final like killing blow to her stepmother is I forgive you. Yes, I wrote and that he, down. And she just yeah. Goes, yeah. And, like, yeah. Falls on the stairs it's and I'm so like, good. It's but it's but it's so Cinderella. And mm-hmm. I think that's very important to what the story yes. is. Yeah. And so um, she winds up blocking her way in the attic. And then the stepmother spins the story to the Archduke. She brings the heel of the shoe and basically blackmails him. He goes, is that a threat? And she goes, yes. Are you threatening me? Yes, yes I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's another great hat. She's got a good hat in that, the blue yes. one with the swirls. Um, and so basically she wants to become a countess and marriages for her daughters. So the Grand Duke says to the prince, Fine, I'll entertain this idea. We're not going to find this woman, but I will do every effort, make every effort possible to find this princess. So that's when they go around to the kingdom to try on the slippers. And this is a lot of 
comedy Co- here of trying on different slippers. Well, just the scene with the stepsisters putting them on. Oh the my second gosh. second one is like... Like and then the like one grabs uh, the guy's bald head. The captain of the guard because, who's yes. like on the prince's side. Yes. Um, played by Nanzo Anunzi. And that's another thing we want to say. They're, while not featured prominently in the cast, we're not looking at another situation where it's like, well, it took place in Europe, so it's, so it's all white yes. cast. They went, this is a made up fantasy land. So the captain of the guard is black. Yeah. And like, they just went, it's a fantasy world. They like, not that it matters, but like, Sorry. But you're seeing people you're of seeing color people. Yeah, where yeah. you might, where you definitely where, didn't in well, the Well, I feel like what I'm and... saying when I said it didn't matter is like, I don't think it matters. I hate when people say, well, that's how it was back then. Well, you're ma- you're making a choice not to do that. Yeah. Um, and it, and representation does matter. And I like that they said, this is a fantasy world. Who cares? Yeah. Like put anybody anywhere. It's, yeah. It, the next kingdom over is China. And on the left is, 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 is Africa. Like who cares? It's made up. They're all from all yeah. over. <laughs> um, and so there's a lot of comedy with trying on the slipper from from place to place as they're going. And I like how they realize Cinderella is there. Uh, the birds come to let the mice know. And they're basically trying to get Cinderella to go downstairs. And she's like, no. Like, so she you? starts singing. Yeah. And she starts singing a song that her mother sang to her, mm-hmm. sa- sang to her to go to sleep when she was little. And the mice try to open the window, and Gus Gus is a little rounder than the other mice, and his weight comes uh, to save the day because he his weight is needed to open the latch yes. on the window, which I thought was a fun little. But bit. I love how he also like throws away. He the has cheese. to decide he to get rid of the cheese. cheese. Yeah, and he's yeah. Like, I'm gonna like it's a heroic moment. Yes. in a fun way. Um, and so she, she has such a beautiful voice, and it kind of floats down to them, and I love how. Even here, the stepmother is boldly lying, saying no one's there. And then we get the reveal that the prince is in with the the rest of the guards. <laughs> and I was so pumped for this. I love that he was there and the Archduke didn't know. And he was like, no, I want to see this woman. And so he goes up, he sees her. And the stepmother, even in that moment, like tells her basically like, oh, don't do this. Like, just every second. To the end. Yeah, she, yeah. There's no redemption for this character. Yeah. If you're worried that this is one of those movies where it's like, well, let's see the bad guy side. No. Yeah. You see the bad guy side and you still by the end. Yeah. And it's really good. And so uh, I wrote some other things here. The narrator also talks about to be seen as we truly are. And yeah. I think that that's a really great... That's, that's the point. She doesn't yes. change into someone else to mm-hmm. be this. She's just... She she has a magical dress to get in the door. Yeah. And all of that is her after that. And everyone's yeah. just enchanted by her. Yeah. Oh, I also love when the stepsisters come home, the story that they tell about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How this woman took there. advantage of the prince. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, it's just really funny. The revisionist history that they have along the way. Uh, And then the last quote, we're at a few minutes here, that I just thought was so good at the end from the narrator is, see the world not as it is, but as it could be. Yeah, it's a very hopeful movie. Yeah, I just think there's so many good moments. Even with the animated version, there's a lot there for children when you're talking about like how to be kind and how to be good in the world. But I think with this one, there's even more tangible Mm -hmm. lessons that you can pull out of it, I think. I, I liked it a lot. I mean, I like I said, I think you could go into it and there are parts that are a little hokey and there's a little moments that are a little too CGI. But so far, this is by far the best Disney live action one we've seen. And I think you brought this up where you said it, it extends the story in ways that stay true to the characters and, true yeah. to, and are interesting and insightful. But it's definitely a movie written yeah, by and people who love this property. The other thing we mentioned at the beginning was they record it bibbity bobbity boo and they record it a dream is a wish your heart makes oh yeah they play and they're both with beautiful songs and Lily they, james has pipes yeah and we all know helena bottom carter can sing and they're so well done and they don't use them in the movie they're at the ending credits so what i will say is make sure you listen to those songs because they're really good yeah skip through the one before that's like ella ella ooh, like yeah the pop I hope, song i hope the person who wrote that isn't listening <laughs> But what I will say is I do wish they included those. She could have been singing that song when she was out feeding the animals. She kind of sings Sweet Nightingale, but not really. She sings like two notes it's of it. It's a fun... It's l- a nod to it, which is nice. It would have been fun nice. if they hadn't 
recorded those songs. Yeah, well. so I think for me, that was really my only negative. I was told by many people to watch this because it's such a beautiful film. So I wasn't sure how much I was going to enjoy the story part of it, but I really loved the story mm-hmm. as well as it's just a beautiful film to watch. Guys, uh, check this one out. Right now it's not on Disney+. Plus. It was for a month and then they took it off again for some, there's some weird rights issue. Contractual reason. You can rent it right now on Amazon Prime. That's, That's how we, we watched did. it. Uh, um, or buy it i think it's worth owning it would be yeah, on absolutely. our shelf so i uh we will be back our next mini tale as promised will be mary poppins returns uh and we'll see you next time all right take care listeners thanks for listening to tara and ryan's princess diaries if you want to tell us your favorite disney villain and why it's guest on send us an email at trprincessdiaries at gmail.com or you can send a tweet about how great maleficent is too at trp diaries Check out our Facebook group by searching for Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, and many more. Wherever you hear us, please be our knight in shining armor and give us a five-star review. Thanks again, and until next time, remember to always live happily ever after. Uh